Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. This is part 19 in the series and here we will continue talking about linear maps. In particular, we will explain that each matrix induces a linear map. But of course, before we start with this, let's thank all the nice people who support me on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget to test your knowledge about linear algebra with the quiz in the description. Okay, now here we start by considering a matrix A with n columns and m rows. In other words, it's an m times n matrix. So this means, as we already know, we just have a table of real numbers. However, we have also already learned that this table of numbers, this matrix, gives us a map. It's an abstract map we call f with index a. And the input space, the domain, is the vector space Rn. And on the other hand, the output space is the vector space Rm. And now we know this map is defined by using the ordinary matrix vector multiplication. In other words, the vector x is sent to a times x. Okay, and now, because we know the definition of a linear map, we can show that this fa is indeed also a linear map. And because this is such an important fact, let's formulate this with a proposition. And there, please recall, for linearity we need exactly two properties. The first one is with respect to the vector addition and therefore we call the map additive. The second one is with respect to the scalar multiplication and we call it homogeneous. However, of course, most of the time we just use the term linearity. Okay, then let's recall from the last video what these two properties mean. The first one tells us that we can pull out the addition sign. So if we add two vectors and put the result into a map, it's the same as adding both outcomes. Okay, and then the second property tells us that we can pull out scalars. So the scalar lambda here can also be written in front of the map. Indeed, this property is what you would call homogeneous. Well, so this was the general concept of a linear map, but now we are able to translate it to the special map FA. So in other words, the left hand side and the right hand side here can be translated into the matrix vector multiplication. More precisely, the left hand side here is the matrix A multiplied with the vector x plus y. And on the other hand, on the right hand side, we have a times x plus a times y. However, that this here is true, we already know by the properties of the matrix vector multiplication. More concretely, this was one of our distributive rules. Therefore, this rule here implies that our map is additive. And indeed, a similar thing we can do with the homogeneous part here. So there we see, the left hand side is just a multiplied with the vector lambda times x. And then the right hand side just scales the vector a times x. Also this here you should now recognize as a property of the matrix product. In particular, this is a law that says that the matrix multiplication is compatible with the scalar multiplication. Hence, by knowing this, we now know that the map FA is indeed a linear map. Now, maybe in order to understand this property, let's look at a two-dimensional example. This means we want to choose a matrix A with two columns. And as always, let's call the columns A1 and A2. And now we apply this matrix A from the left to a vector X and a vector Y. This means both vectors also need two components now. Hence, what you should see here is that we start on the left hand side of the equation. And now, of course, we can simply do the vector addition for x and y. So in other words, this is our new vector. And then we simply apply the matrix vector multiplication as always. So this means we have the column a1 times the scalar x1 plus y1. Now, here please note, usually we would write a scalar in front of the vector. However, here we can be a little bit sloppy and write it on the right hand side because then the matrix vector multiplication is easier to remember. 
So you see, we just multiply the first component here with the first column there and the second component there with the second column here. Hence, this here is our result we get as a vector addition. And then you should see, we can simply use our distributive laws for the scalar multiplication. So this is not complicated at all. What we get are four vectors we add. And again, please don't forget, usually the scalars should be in front of the vectors. Okay, and now you should see, we just have to rearrange the vectors here to get the right hand side of our equation. So I would say, let's take this vector and put it to the right and this one to the left. And then we almost see what we have. Namely, it's again a matrix vector multiplication. But now the first part here is the matrix A applied to our vector X. And of course, the second part here is our matrix A applied to our vector Y. Okay, and then you see, this is our result we wanted. Or in other words, with this calculation here, you could also prove the linearity of the map FA. So in the end, you should see, it's not so complicated, it's a very natural property. Still, again, I should tell you what we have done here. We have started with the matrix A, which is just a table of numbers. And then we were able to transform these concrete numbers into an abstract linear map. So on the one hand, we calculate with very concrete numbers, and on the other hand here, we deal with very abstract mathematical objects like maps. And indeed, we will see this also works the other way around. So this means, if I give you an abstract linear map, you can define a matrix. So you see, this correspondence here is very important, and this red, this converse implication, we will discuss in the next video. Because now, first in this video, I want to explain what happens when we take two matrices. So let's simply call them A and B. And now you might already guess, we want to multiply them, which means this dimension here has to fit with the number of rows of B. Therefore, B is now an element in the set R to the power K times N. So in conclusion, A times B is well defined and an element in r to the power m times n. Okay, and now as before, we can translate both matrices into two linear abstract maps. So you see, we have fa and fb. And maybe let's visualize this with sets. So we have rn on the left hand side and rm on the right hand side, and in the middle rk. And then you see, we have two maps, fa and fb. And indeed, by this picture, you immediately see we can form the composition of both maps. Hence, we have the map FA after FB. And as always, you know, the composition of two maps is denoted with this small circle. Okay, then I would say, let's see what the map FA after FB does. So in other words, we just put in a vector X. And then you know, the composition just means that we first apply our map FB and then we put this result into FA. However, of course, here we already know, FB of x is simply B times x. Therefore, B times x is the vector we put into the map FA. But there we know, FA is given by the matrix vector multiplication with the matrix A. So we simply have A times Bx. And now, exactly at this point, we can use the associativity of our matrix product. Of course, there we just need to see the vector x as a matrix. And then the associativity tells us this is AB times x. And then we can simply compare the right hand side here with the left hand side there. And then we recognize that we have shown that FA after FB is given by the matrix vector product where the matrix is A times B. Or to put it in other words, this composition is simply given by the linear map corresponding to the matrix AB. Hence, we see that our definition of the matrix product was not arbitrary at all. Indeed, we had to choose it exactly in this way, such that it can represent the composition of linear maps. Or you could also say it like this, an abstract composition of linear maps 
can now be calculated with two tables of numbers. Simply because we have the correct multiplication rule. Ok, I think that's good enough for today. In the next video, as promised, we will talk about this converse implication here and there. So let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye.